Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media, just taking a look at the 2023 deluxe hardcover release of A Righteous Thirst for Vengeance. This is a book from Rick Remender, Andre Lima Arojo, and of course uh, Chris O'Halloran from Ice Cream Man. And what we usually do at this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. Now this book, it was a darling of 2021. Um, it started off as such a banger. This is one of those few books where I read the first eight issues and I saved the last part of it, the I guess the uh, final act, for whenever it got collected. So finally when this released, I was like, yes, I got to finish it. Um, but anywho, uh, this release, it's very unique uh, in this case. So maybe just uh, looking at the exterior here, you're already noticing it's pretty damn big. Uh, it is an Image Comics release, um, but the unique thing about Image Comics is that when they release books, usually when they release a hardcover, it's already a pretty much a deluxe format. Like it's pretty, basically the size of like a DC deluxe. So here's like Department of Truth here for you just to show you the difference. So this is like what an Image standard hardcover is. This is a deluxe Image book. And maybe just for good measure, I have the uh, Deluxe Watchmen here as an example, just to remind everyone that, yeah, DC, Deluxes, Marvel, Oversized, and apparently Image Standard hardcovers are actually the same. But Image Deluxes, wow, they're freaking huge. Um, but you know what? This book, it does have a lot of visual storytelling to it. So the narrative, the narrative does, in fact, uh, use that angle way more often, I'd say. So it's probably righteous that they did go for a larger format in this case. Uh, but walking around it, you have this very clean aesthetic. I love this whole sea foam aesthetic that it has. Yeah, so it has like kind of a muted panel here, but as usual with Image Comics, that flat spine design, which also extends that same theme. And yes, that same aesthetic goes on to the exterior, that sea foam aesthetic. I almost feel like uh, that was done almost for the sake of Vancouver because there's, if you ever go to Vancouver, there seems to be like that weird, that color theme that's just throughout the entire city. So that's just something about it. And yeah, the beginning of the story, actually a good portion of the story does take place there. Now, in terms of bonus material, there is quite a lot. There's like 50 pages worth of it. Um, that goes to show you, this was uh, definitely a labor of love. Because this story, it's very visceral and it's very grounded. So you definitely get that impression. But yeah, just a catalog of the covers here. Pretty damn awesome. I think uh, there was Raphael Grandpa did one of them. It's just her sketchwork of the first character design. Surprisingly, not too many, which is a which is actually a really good thing. It just condenses everything so you can focus on the narrative a little bit better. Love that about it. But yeah, you're kind of seeing how graphic this story can be just from the bonus material here. Uh, but yeah, even the plot designing and all that, and you know your typical fare with you know your character bio. Sorry, your creator bios just at the end oh yeah he is Portuguese so yeah it is Arusho. show anywho and at least in terms of um, story and plot points or art and plot points I should say um, the story is really basically like a lone wolf and cub but I would more so make it akin to like Road to Perdition you know like that Max Allen Collins uh, book or even the movie if you remember that movie um, but yeah as it just starts off as mentioned it does take place in Vancouver BC at least a good portion of the book and yeah, he just has this very pedestrian character, Sonny. He's living his life, apparently an insurance adjuster or whatnot. Um, you could tell he seems to be well-intended in all shapes. He's just, you know, he's just a regular dude. You know, he doesn't want to mess with anybody. He doesn't want to hurt nobody. He just want to live his life kind of thing. Um, he's out to go meet some of his clients out up north. Um, and the, the interesting moment to a lot of people when they read this book is this moment here where uh, he meets this man and this man with a very weird shopping list of groceries. Uh, he's just there. Of course, Sonny's just there to get a new pack of cigarettes or whatever. Um, but yeah, this was a very monumental moment for the rest of the series. But personally, I find this is the more intriguing part. This is the parable of the entire book right here. This parable of this uh, broken wing pigeon. And how you should either put it out of its misery or let it suffer living the way it is. As I said, it's a perfect metaphor. And as you can see, a lot of this book is more so Araujo. Like, yeah, Rick Remender is there, but 
as mentioned, this story is told in a visual sense. So a majority of it, you may think it's just meandering, but it's very detail oriented in terms of like why things are happening as they're happening. Right. And also a lot of the humor and all the plays come off of it. But anywho, uh, Sonny, he has mentioned he's up north to visit his clients, goes, knocks on the door and he is visited by a very, very, very graphic uh, scene very methodical and he's already seen the evidence of that earlier encounter at the grocery store putting the pieces together realizing what's going on so he kind of stumbles onto this like dark web assassins guild where yeah you send a target and yeah just an assassin will be assigned to kill this person so i like how this book in a lot of it is breaking cliches so this character you would expect him to do you know, the typical things you see from other stories, other, you know, mediums and whatnot. Oh, he'll typically, oh, he'll do the wrong thing. Oh, don't go through that door or whatever. He doesn't actually go through the door. That kind of logic. He makes smart decisions and actually succeeds in, like, kind of trying to topple this, this kind of a weird dark web, this Hessen Guild. It's very unique in that sense. But yeah, uh, in this case, he's just uh, basically sent off with another assassin to go deal with... Um, I guess Neva, probably one of the few characters you meet in the story. He, and I like how that whole scene plays out. And you're kind of seeing it again. The kinetics, the literary, sorry, the graphic storytelling is so damn on point. Like, Andre, you deserve a lot of credit for this book. Because, yeah, majority of the story is him. Just, of course, making it visually appealing to all of us, right? Uh, yes, the book is pretty damn graphic, so... Be forewarned in that case. You are going to see nudity. You are going to see yeah, quite heavy violence, I'd say. Hyper-violence, even to a certain point. Um, but, yeah, as mentioned, he tries to get Neva out. Neva and her son. And that's where the whole lone wolf and cub angle of the book kind of starts. And that's what I like. Like, the book starts off a certain way. It does have that, okay, it's me against these all these assassins. It's me against this weird politician, this megalomaniac, this, you know, this sadist, this sociopathic kind of person. And again, probably one of the best reoccurring characters is this nameless assassin, the one he keeps running into. I love how in this book, there's a lot of storytelling that never, ever even gets hinted in any dialogue. So like the, the angle that this guy just constantly has this weird very weird conniption he's a very he's pretty much like a serial killer he has this weird uh, modus operandi where he has to film and he has to experience all of your pain or whatever so he's filming it he gets out of his car and he films you like he likes to see your fear or whatever like he's a very scary character that's for sure um but anywho the book ultimately yeah they move they go up north the book uh, eventually will travel it kind of does a little bit of jet setting in it um, so I do appreciate that angle. Um, by the time I actually did manage to reach the, the ending of this book, man, I tell you, it, it did finish kind of like a revenge fantasy kind of book. I can't deny it. Very, it, it kind of ended in a, that kind of cliche. But I will say, the book had like several closing points. It's almost like uh, when you watch Return of the King, that Lord of the Rings film, where like you swear to God the movie ended like five times, but that kind of happens in this too. So it kind of keeps you guessing, okay, is, is there more to it? Is it really going to change the way the, the real ending happens? I will say it does ultimately come out pretty cliche, which is a little bit unfortunate. But um, aside from that, though, this is such a strong narrative overall. Um, there's, even, as I mentioned, a lot of storytelling. Please, uh, if you're going to get this book pay attention because there's like, for instance, a real motivation behind why Sonny is doing what he's doing, why he's choosing to, you know, attack these assassins, why he's choosing to protect people and all that. Um, it, it's a very, very small touch. You will notice it now that I've mentioned it to you, you'll pick up on it, I hope. But uh, man, what an awesome way to arrange a story an awesome way to arrange a narrative. This is easily two thumbs up this is a 10 out of 10 release like image comics did such a great job supporting of course uh rick remender's giant generator here but man what a banger of a book
But it's no longer about my opinion, of course. As always, I wouldn't mind hearing your comments down below. And hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next video. Y'all folks, take care.